probably the most common question I get or we get is how effective is um, your program or your tr treatment, um, which is really an important question and most people, not most people, all people who are calling with any kind of cancer do need to know this. Um, to answer that question though is kind of defined terms. And in fact, when any time that any two people are talking, two or more people are talking, uh, and they speak the same language, it's important that they define terms. Because if you think about it, um, uh, the word bad used to mean bad. But now, sometimes it means good. You know, that's really bad. It means it's good. Um, my son will say, uh, wow, that's sick. And sick actually means good. So really, it's important when you're working with people to define what, what uh, the term mean. First of all, this is not my program. It's Oasis. It's, we've, we've developed this program over the years uh, and it's based on nature. Um, it's, based, it's based on natural law. Um, so I would really have to say that this is nature's program, not our program. Uh, we happen to be the hosts. Other people will say, uh, does your treatment work? Well, treatment implies that, we're, that we are a treatment facility, which we are not. We are a healing center. So healing center is much different than a treatment facility. In a treatment facility, the person comes in and very passively sits back and gets treated for a disease, which is um, supposed to be some entity that gets into the person that is causing them a problem. Um, and that's not at all what we do. We are a healing facility, um, uh, a healing center. So people come to our center and learn how to heal. Um, and healing is only something that the person can do. We cannot do it for them. Okay, so we are guides and teachers and along this path. But does it all work, however you want to call it? So you may say, okay, enough with the definitions. Just tell me, does this work? And uh, the answer is absolutely, does it work? And how effective is it? Well, if we had to put numbers on it, I would say that somewhere around 70% of the people uh, leave our center with either no cancer or just a little bit left, small amounts left, um, um, in all stages. And that's not really difficult. In fact, anyone who has cancer can usually get it taken out or get it removed with radiation or chemo. Um, the trick is keeping it gone. The trick is maintaining health. Um, that is, if you have health. Unfortunately, most of the ways that people deal with cancer uh, eliminate health while they eliminate the cancer and that's the big problem so if someone is getting chemo and radiation then uh, it's unfortunately not targeted enough and so it winds up destroying the person's immune system and their ability to heal and all those sorts of things um, and so uh, they lose they lose their 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 ability to heal so <clears throat> getting rid of cancer is not difficult what we like to do is we like to make sure that we get rid of it in ways that do not compromise the person and do not cause any collateral damage and if we do that, then they have a good healing mechanism when they leave and they'll be able to maintain that. The way that we think that we are distinguished from other centers is that we teach people how to stop making cancer. And you think about it. If you don't stop making cancer, it really doesn't matter how good anyone is at getting rid of it because it'll be back uh, or it will never have gone away. So if a woman has a little uh, uh, malignant tumor in her breast, um, Think about it. If it never grew another cell and if it never spread anywhere, she would live a normal life. So she's really not asking us, how do we get rid of this? She's asking us, how do we stop making this? That's really the question. Um, and, and unless the cancer is obstructing some uh, vital function of life like eating or having bowel movements or breathing, uh, or unless it's causing severe pain or just simply way too large, unless any of those uh, criteria are met, then, and it's just inside somewhere, if it never grew or expanded or did anything else, the person would live out a normal life. So really, the answer is that we all need to stop making cancer because, by the way, we all have nanograms or micrograms of cancer in us. It's just part of what's going on. So we have to keep that in mind, that really the answer for all of us is to stop making cancer, and especially for the person who now has a, uh, a tumor and is, has been diagnosed with it. So yes, it does work because what we do is we um, help the person restore their biochemistry back to a biochemistry that does not allow cancer to grow and flourish. Okay, and if you can, you can think of a cancer cell as a seed, 
and that seed must find fertile soil. And if your body just doesn't have that fertile soil, then it simply won't be able to grow. Okay? We, you can do a blood test and find circulating tumor cells in, on lots of people, both with diagnosed with cancer and those not diagnosed with cancer. So the question is, are those circulating tumor cells going to be able to find fertile soil and take root and grow? And that is uh, what we want. That's what we do is we help you change your soil so that it will not allow cancer to grow. So another, another metaphor that is, uh, makes things clear is if you had an aquarium and the fish were sick, the veterinarian wouldn't say, bring me a fish. He'd say, bring me a cup of the water, and I'll tell you what's wrong with those fish. And so what we help you do is change the water in your aquarium. If you don't change the water in the aquarium, it doesn't matter how much medicine you put in, the fish will still get sick. In other blogs, we'll talk about um, really what is disease and what is cancer. But uh, before we do that, I wanted to give the foundation to let you know that even if you get exposed to something that is definitely carcinogenic, causes cancer, if your body doesn't permit that to grow, then it simply will not do it. Because haven't we all wondered, why is it that so-and-so has been smoking for 40 years and he doesn't have lung cancer? How did that happen? Right? Or... or uh, Five people were at the at the uh, in one specific room at in um, uh, at Fukushima, and uh, not all of them got cancer. Why is that? So it's not definitely the seed that causes it, but it is really the terrain or the soil that uh, allows cancer to grow. That's what we change, and that's why it is absolutely effective.